going to the film on Scout Ranch this summer, 2018 crew. Uh, we're going in early August, which is known there as the monsoon season, so we can expect rain in the early afternoons every day. Um, it'll be warm, it'll come on fast. And so what we want is a fast way of getting rain gear on that gives us some air. So I'm gonna use some rain quilts. So this video is about the engineering of one. Taking it out now, comes out of its little sack. And fold it, find the ends of it, Unbuckle the belt, bring it around, fasten it in the front, redo the belt, the umbrella, and since the pack material is waterproof, I'm ready to go. I made a bunch of these. Anyone on the crew who's man enough to wear a kilt can have one. So I'll talk through the dimensions of it. I have a roll of sill nylon. My roll is 50, 62 inches wide. Um, you, they vary from 59 inches to 64 inches. The idea is to use the full width of that roll at the bottom of the kilt so that you have as much room as possible as you walk, which means we're gonna have to gather it up at the waist. And that's what this is really all about, is the gathering. We're going to cut a rectangle of sill nylon. The width um, around the body will be the full width of the sill nylon. That'll be around 60 inches. We're interested in what it is around the waist. And this is measured. This is not pants size. It's about 39 here on me. And I wear a 34 in the waist and pants, so go figure. So um, I have a, a working waist here of 39. And the height from my waist down to just a bit below my knee, uh, call that maybe 26 inches. So we need to size the rectangle so that in a finished product, um, I can fit it to 39 around and then 26 down. Got it. Um, we want a finished height of 26 inches. We know that we'll lose some, about an inch, because of rolled seams. Um, that'll be on the top and the bottom. At the waist of the kilt, we're gonna have a fold over piece here that's an inch and a quarter. Uh, that is to admit a one inch wide elastic band that had be inside and sewn down on the inside and we don't want to sew down the elastic band anywhere except the ends to allow the fabric to move around that. So then uh, what we need to do is to create the, uh, the channel at the top, but we can't just fold it over and sew it all the way down and then add the, uh, the omni tape and the pleats and so on because we need to have an opening yet to put in the elastic band. And so what we'll do is we'll find areas to sew it down, add the omni tape, add the uh, pleats, and then later as a last step, we'll insert the elastic, sew it down, and then sew down the channel to enclose it all. So I found a roll of elastic tape in with my wife's project things, and this is great because I can put in some elastic on the waistband of the kilt without having the profile of a cord or a cord lock. So in two places on the waist, I've allocated eight inches. And in that inches, I'm going to put a five inch piece of elastic tape. So when I sew it down, I'm going to stretch it out to eight inches and fasten it down at these ends. And once it's sewn into that channel, when it contracts, it's going to bring in three inches of fabric, which gives us that much um, adjustability. I'm making the waist of the kilt, have sewn the channel down from here to here. This is six inches for Omni Tape. This is a width that is designed uh, for the pleat. And then this is free because this is a spot where we will later insert the elastic and sew it down. So the question then is how do we mark the thing for the pleat? So the basic rule of thumb is if the pleat is gonna take up um, uh, T inches of, of width, then and this here needs to be 1.5 times T. So specifically, this particular pleat is gonna take in three inches. So um, this is gonna be four and a half inches. And the way that we do the pleat is at the center of this four and a half inches. Um, this is a spot where this line will come and this line will come. That distance is three inches. And so when we bring it in like so and bring it in like so, 
then we will have removed three inches. And so the name of the game now is to do this and pin it down and sew it. So we've done the pinning now. What I hope you can see is that the outside marks of the pleat area, this one and this one, mark where on the flip side the pleat ends. And so that much space is taken up with the pleat. So the last thing to, uh, to note is that when we sew this down, we'll sew across here and sew across here, and we need to go over it uh, two or three times because there's gonna be a fair amount of stress that's placed on that, and so I think more than one line of stitching is needed. So we start off, we have six inches of Omni tape. Then we position a pleat right immediately next to that six inches of Omni tape. After which we allot eight inches for the elastic tape. But unlike here where we have sewn down the waist channel, here we will leave it open because we're gonna put in the waistband last. We put another uh, pleat right next to the waistband. And on this side we do the same. Here is the six inches, here is the pleat. There's the eight inches of channel waiting for the uh, elastic band, and then another pleat. And right in the middle, between these two, centered, will be a pleat that'll be right at the very back. Inside here, we've taken a 14 by seven inch piece of silk nylon and made a little bag out of it just by folding it over. So this is a seven by seven. You can see that it's sewn on the inside. You notice that we have a placement of a piece of Omni tape like so, um, and this is gonna be handy for stuffing the sack and then fastening it down. One last piece of the kilt to be aware of, fastening in the very front down one edge, put a vertical piece that uh, must be about three inches. On the other side, put a horizontal piece that's about the same, and then when you fasten it down, gives one some flexibility in you know, how tightly in one wants it, um, just to give oneself some options. That's all there is to it. Now the part you've all been waiting for with bated breath, and that's the math on how to make this all go. So remember that we start off with a measurement around our waist. Now that's not gonna be what we're gonna cut the waist to be because we have to have some overlap and we have to have some stretch. So how much overlap? Well, we have six inches of Omni tape, and if we overlap it by four inches, that's gonna give us some flexibility in either direction. And so we'll take that measurement and we'll add four inches to it. But another place we need to add, has to do with the stretchy bit here. So each of these uh, stretch tapes can stretch up to three inches. If each of them are stretching half an inch, I mean an inch and a half, then we'll add three. And so that means they take the measured width plus seven inches, and what you have then is what the target that we want the finished waist to be. Now after we have taken our silk nylon and rolled the edges, we have a particular width at the bottom. It's going to be around 60 inches, um, a little more, a little less, depending on what you started with. And what we need to do is we need to take width away from that to uh, get to the target. How much do we take away? Well, it's just the difference. It's the, uh, the, the finish length minus the, the target length. And the, the pleats are gonna take up whatever that amount happens to be. Now, I'm a symmetric kind of guy, which means that I would take up the same amount of fabric by opposing pleats. So I have a pair of pleats, I'll call them the outside pleats. They're the ones that are right next to the, uh, the Omni tape, right there. And I have the, a pair that are the uh, inside pleats, and they're the ones that are on the opposite side of the elastic and then there's one at the back. So the name of the game now is to assign widths of uh, fabric for each of those two to take up. There are different combinations that you can work through, and I've got a table here, and uh, by appealing to symmetry so that the ones that are on the inside are the same, and the ones that are outside are the same, and then you have some flexibility at the center, then you can see that by varying the widths that you take up between two and three inches, you have quite a range of uh, pieces of fabric that you can, that you can take up. So that, 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 that's all, folks. Showed you how to make a nice lightweight rain skirt. This weighs just 65 and a half grams. Fits in no pocket. As you saw earlier, you can put it on in a matter of you know, 10, 20 seconds. So very, very fast. Um, the way that I've done the design is quite adjustable. Combination of uh, variation that you have in the overlap of the Omni tape and the stretch panels. There's a dynamic range of you know, at least 10 inches. And so you don't have to tailor make this for every single individual in your crew. Uh, you can take a bunch of waist measurements and uh, come up with something that uh, will fit most. And so I bet with maybe two different sizes, uh, you could fit most everybody in the crew. So we are ready to go. Let it rain because we are ready.